it's absolute faith that brings absolute miracle everything in your life commit it unto the lord not failure when you lack faith you cannot experience miracle I'm delighted to be counted among the living who shall have grace to praise the Lord for the good thing that he's been doing in my life. And I believe that you are delighted to be before the throne of mercy this morning. It's my prayer that nothing, and I mean it, nothing by the very special grace of God will take us away before the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm talking today to you about two men and one God. God needs no introduction if you believe in God. If you believe him, you will know already that God exists. I do not need to remind you of Psalm 14, the fool that says there is no God in his heart, for it is absolute that there is God. Before you were born, and your great, 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 great grandfathers or mothers were born, God exists. Now that you were born, even now in this age, God is still existing. And when you are gone, when you get old, we all get old, and if Christ tarries, he will still be God. Therefore, God exists in the past, in the present, and is going to, he's existing in the future already. To retrieve the invisible but merciful nature of God, let me start by talking about the two men of the Bible that made me make today's title, Two Men and One God. I'm going to talk about man one. God created the first of the two men and placed him in absolute comfort. He gave him absolute control over everything. He ever gave him a simple instruction. It sets a boundary. On one thing he must not eat. But the first man touched and ate that which God said he shouldn't eat. In spite of all the comfort that God gave him, he was very curious. He wanted to know that thing that God said he shouldn't touch. He was punished and he was evicted by his landlord. You know the main landlord of this world is God himself. If you don't believe that God is the landlord, read Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord and all therein. So you might be claiming landlords. You might be the ballet. You might be the king that says the land belongs to Abalunil and do everything. But somebody owns that land because one day when you're dead, you will be buried inside that land. And that time, you don't even need money to pay rent, except you go to the vault. So the landlord sent him out of that garden. Look at this picture I'm painting. That's man number one. At a point, God destroyed the entire generation of that first man, but spared one man and his family. Again, like I said in the beginning, God does what he wants to do at his own time for his own reason and purposes. Now the second man, to the second man. God sent this second man on a special errand to help liberate his beloved people and to ensure that they are guided when it comes to sin. God gave them a set of rules or laws. And with that, the descendant of the first man, you remember the first man that was evicted from the garden, his descendant can no longer claim any ignorance because now there is law. Even though the law says ignorance of law is no excuse. For man at that point, you might pretend that, okay, I don't know. Okay, then. The first man that I'm talking about is Adam. And the second man is Moses. Moses was offered the Ten Commandments on a platter of gold in Exodus 32. But the people he was to teach already derailed because it was taking too long time to return from Mount Sinai. Because it made them already worshiping idols, just as so many people today, when they are waiting on the Lord and it's taking for so long, they run to the idols or they leave the church or they leave God and they have excuse, they have reason, they say, okay, they don't want to be there and they leave. 
these people were impatient. And Moses, in anger, broke the tablets. I'm telling you a familiar story, but I'm going somewhere. Well, but God offered Moses another chance. He returned to Mount Sinai, and having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he got another tablet, the tablet of loss. So through these two men, I've not spoken about God, I'm just talking about two men, we see sin committed. We also see how God sent law to help us not to sin. One of them established sin. The other one came, God asked him, after so many years, but what God gave him to do was to rescue people and then to let him know, this is what you need to do in order to run away, to, to escape sin. The role of this man may be considered tough, especially about the laws and the consequences of flouting the law. So God himself decided to appear as man and live with man. He came to relieve man and to redeem man. I need to let you remember this because the world seemed to have forgotten that at a point there was sin. Of course, there's still sin. And that at a, at a point, God sent a so set of rules that can help us not to run into sin. The world seemed today to remember only the good things that we can get from God, not the things that God really wants us to do. God decided to come in human form to rescue man from himself because man never stopped to sin. In spite of that rule, man did not stop to sin. Now let us establish that the two men here, God spoke to them. God spoke to Adam in the garden and when he asked them, where are you? In the heat of the day. And God also spoke to Moses in the place that we, in the what we have read today, severally. But you know of when God spoke to him in Exodus 19 and God spoke to him in Exodus 20 when he delivered the law. God spoke to him again in 32, Exodus 33. God spoke to him again in 34 and he gave him the law. God continued to speak with the second man, but the first man was sent out of comfort of the Garden of Eden. By the way, Eden in Hebrew means paradise or place of pleasure. God created a place of pleasure, but man decided to turn it to a place of pleasure. In John 1, 17, we see an explanation of the event of Exodus 19 and 20 and 34. For the law was given yeah. by Moses. Yes. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Thank you. And that is it today. God spoke with the second man, this time around, for the second man to get the law from God. Adam didn't do anything. It was a place of pleasure for him. He didn't do anything before. God just spoke with him and said, I created you, do this, do that. And when he sinned, he didn't even have to fast. But for Moses to hear the voice of God again after the first encounter, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then God released the tablet to him. So what Moses would have gotten with no stress, he got by really working for it. The same man God that came in Matthew chapter 4 that we've read today, verse from verse 1. After 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, was tempted by Satan. But he triumphed in order for us to get grace. Remember John 1 17? Law through Moses, grace and truth through Jesus Christ. Grace is that we can come back to him in repentance and remove the cause of death, but can only sustain this rebirth by subjecting our life to his wishes, by living by his laws. This is the story that I've told you today of two men and one God. The two men, the one that brought sin, the one that brought law to guide us, and the one that brought to us, which is God himself in human form, grace and truth. Today we have latched onto grace. Everybody, with the grace of God, I will do it, even when you know you are doing what is wrong. Oh, by grace, God will save me. Oh, his grace is sufficient for me. You quote it, if I, you know, copiously say this thing, say this thing that everybody believes that, oh yeah. But one thing is a fact. The truth that you cannot enjoy grace unless you live by the law of God. Shall we, therefore, continue to sin and expect grace? We cannot. Today, what do we do? We continue to sin. 
we pretend that we can get grace. We continue to believe that it is possible for us to get grace from God because Jesus has come to die for our sin. We forget that it is not possible. We ask God to do everything for us, but we refuse to do anything for God by merely obeying the simple rule of running away from sin. We enjoy the grace of sin because there's always God to, guide, God to help us out. But we refuse to endure the pain of sin so that we can get the grace of God. I believe you've been greatly blessed through today's message. And I would like to invite you to join us at Christ Arriver International Church Guest Money Parish every Sunday at 9 a.m. for our glorious day service. We are located off Ibadan Oyo Expressway. I would like to see you around and I'll be glad to welcome you. God bless you as you come. Shalom. Oriel Gates, all our roads and gardens.